I'm going to talk very quickly because that means we get to lunch quicker. OK, perfect. So I just want to talk to you a bit about uh, Calabra and particularly Calabra productivity. Uh, we're quite an unusual company. Um, instead of being a boring company for years and then writing a mission statement, uh, we actually believe our mission statement, and it's quite simple. Uh, you know, make open source the de facto standard in the industry, um, or make LibreOffice rock when we apply it to LibreOffice. And it's quite easy to understand. If we do this, the shareholders are happy, uh, which is uh, me and Philippe and in increasingly some of our staff as we move forward. Um, and that's cool. So that's what we're about. Um, when you use Calabra, that's what we're doing. I'd just like to actually talk to you a little bit about um, latency and um, remote controls. No, <clears throat> <I d 'clears throat> this is the parent company. So Calabra does all sorts of awesome things outside the scope of LibreOffice that might be interesting to you. So maybe you've driven a car. Well, we get Linux into cars, you know, so we're doing a whole load of work to provide services and support, um, to provide automotive infrastructure, um, so that hopefully there will be open source, properly run projects out there so you can hack your car and have fun. Um, uh, we, we work on semiconductor vendors. So, you know, we work with uh, all of the big semiconductor vendors uh, that you can imagine, um, enabling their hardware, writing Linux kernel drivers for them, um, you know, doing interesting bespoke uh, development. Uh, OEM stuff, so helping people make embedded systems that do crazy stuff, hopefully not spying on you, but you never know. Um, <clears throat> what they do with it, you know. Um, so uh, we also do uh, digital TV stuff. So uh, actually we're embedded inside a whole loads of televisions. If you buy a smart television, loads of Calabra code has gone into uh, these things behind the scenes uh, to, make, to make these beautiful set-top boxes left and right. Um, digital signage is going to swallow the world. Uh, if you go to McDonald's, you can see it happening already, you know. The, the sort of the cold stuff that you're about to throw away on the rack is... Uh, you know, it's being heavily advertised in the signs above, so you buy it and uh, they don't waste anything. Um, medical devices, so, you know, as you reach your, uh, the end of your life, you can be confident that Calabra has, you know, debugged the Linux kernel in the, uh, you know, in, in the pacemaker inside your body and, and, and the, you know, the, the, the device on the side. So, so it's a whole load of, of different things. But the mission there, you, maybe you forgot our mission, let me, let me go back there, um, is to make open source the de facto standard in the industry. We want everything to be open source. There shouldn't be an excuse for a lame piece of hardware in that device by your bed that isn't open and you know, beautiful and secure and clean and, and, and nicely maintained and so on. So that's what uh, Calabra does. Um, and we have a LibreOffice division, which is called Productivity. And you can see purple people everywhere that are, you know, I see blue people, but I also see purple people. So that's good. Um, how do we fund it? Ah, yeah. So fulfilling our mission is made slightly more difficult by the fact that programmers require salaries. Um, this, is, this is a problem. Um, not all programmers require salaries. I, I see just the most wonderful volunteers around here that do just the most fantastic things in their spare time, and we're deeply grateful. It's just amazing you know, to be in a community where people have that passion. And most of the people we hire had that passion too. You know, they worked as students, or they, they just did it for the love of it. So it, it's great to have that. Um, but at some stage, you know, reality bites, and people need to uh, eat. <clears throat> Hopefully before that point, you know, we, we've, we've sold something, and we've delighted a customer, and uh, we've actually uh, got paid, and then we can help people eat, which is good, whilst working on LibreOffice. Um, and so, so one of the things here is this, there is no money ferry, you know? Um, and this is, this is something that I've worked in big companies and little companies. I've talked to a lot of people in the community, um, and what they perhaps don't realize is that every euro, every dollar, everything that we spend on eating uh, came ultimately from a customer, right? So we had to delight some customers. We had to make their life beautiful. And, and, and this is really important. This underlies quite a lot of what I spend my time doing. And so, you know, to sponsor the conference, it's great. We love to do that. We love to help people. But somehow we have to, we have to earn all that. It seems obvious, but many people never grasp it. Amazing, isn't it? So uh, we have to have happy customers. Luckily, we have quite a lot of them. The problem is that as a consultancy, um, there's two ways of doing consultancy. You can do it badly and create yourself an endless job, you know, like, you make a job for life for yourself, and it's, you, you can retire rich. Um, or you can do a really good job, and then you need new customers all the time, because you've solved their problem. You know, you're on to the next one. Um, so at least from a, from a consultancy perspective, you know, we have to do a whole load of customer acquisition. Um, and a product perspective, too. So 
you know, we do some heavy duty marketing uh, work. Lenny up there is even now thinking of how to acquire the next lead, you know. And we have salespeople going out, reaching out and telling people how good free software is and how to use it and how they can get involved with it. As a sales team, you know, which I um, <clears throat> enjoy getting involved with myself and uh, Kendi has many gray hairs and, you know, th th there are all sorts of people out there. Um, calling people, telling them about LibreOffice, pitching the benefits, uh, investing in pilots, going to places, showing them that it works, uh, you know, helping them see that they can save money and, and being friendly and there is support and there are people there. Of course, listening to customers, explaining how their problems can be fixed, helping them understand, and then, you know, uh, actually selling them things, hopefully. Um, so <clears throat> the avarice watch thing at the bottom here is that um, I'm very interested in money, but primarily as a means to fulfill our mission, right? I don't care about money. I, I care about LibreOffice and free software and making it rock. Unfortunately, money is the enabling grease that makes this uh, happen. Hence, a corporate plug here. Let me give you some examples of what we've done in the last year. So, so here's one of the things that uh, I, I was involved with, uh, and it's, it's quite fun. If you like 3D GL transitions and finding holes in your drivers, um, it's great. There are all these nice new uh, 3D blingy uh, transitions uh, that, that are quite nice and interoperable, improved user interface for that. Nice to find a customer that wants it, right? We, we really are thrilled to uh, have that. I'm um, working with uh, Core, again, uh, new and off, doing this Dutch military um, project so that you, know, you can be uh, uh, confident, I hope, that your data is not leaking outside your organization, that the classification of it is right, and it doesn't accidentally get emailed to the press uh, in its current form. Um, OpenGL acceleration, so improving the VCL uh, code structure, um, polishing that, speeding up. This is things we've done in the last, last year, I guess. Um, adapting our code to the very latest uh, GL hardware, so making shaders bigger, strangely. Um, and uh, lots, and lots, of, uh, lots and lots of fun stuff here. The, the hope is that we can get both quality and performance. So previously, you had this dichotomy of you could have very high-quality image previews, and you could wait for them. <clears throat> or you could have very interactive uh, editing, and you, know, you couldn't see the image. And uh, hopefully, we can now have both. That's, that's the goal. And it, it, even, you know, uh, it even works. So yeah, amazing. Um, PDF, document insert, and crop. So this is actually a very small company came along and said, we have this problem. We want to be able to crop PDFs. Uh, we want to be able to embed them like other images. And we can't you know, do this stuff. And we pointed out that, you know, well, you can actually load it in drawer, and you can paste a GDI meta file, and then you can da 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 And ah, that's too difficult. So anyway, so we did this for them, and it's beautiful. Um, and of course, we have the PDF then preserved inside the meta file. So in the future, when we can render it better, we'll render it better, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's pretty nice. Um, one of the things we also uh, like to do, and, and this is one of the privileges of employing smart people, you know, and, and just the joys of keeping them in the project, uh, that Miklos, you know, in his evenings, uh, likes to fix RTF bugs. So actually, you know, we fixed, I think, 30 plus bug fixes in the last year of the RTF filter. Here's a great example, you know, uh, before, bad, after, you know, yeah. You need, you need your LibreOffice uh, logo there. Um, it's very important. I mean, it's actually very important for governments. Of course, lots of people are still using RTF as the, uh, as the open standard of only two decades ago. Um, so, so yeah, that's pretty encouraging. And loads of, of unit tests there as well. One of the things we've been investing very heavily in is uh, Collabora Online. Um, which uh, is also known as LibreOffice Online. We've contributed it all upstream, of course. Um, and it looks a bit like this. I think there'll be wall-to-wall uh, -wall talks about it and demos and stuff. You can go and see purple people and, and ask for them. Um, this is a new laptop. I'm not going to demo it now. now. <clears throat> However, it's pretty awesome. You can, you can get all of the joys and high fidelity of LibreOffice rendering in your browser, and it works really well. Um, particularly when you compare it with, uh, you know, other office suites. Let me uh, talk that through. So, so in terms of why you want uh, Collabora Online, uh, you want it because you can control your data. You have it on your premises, you know. It's in your box, it's in the corner, and you know who's touching it. You can see the traffic uh, coming in. Now, some people promise that they'll put your, uh, you know, your data inside, say, the European Union, uh, which is great. So all of your data stays there. <clears throat> Uh, but in their cloud, obviously. The only problem is that they don't really control the routing infrastructure. So, you know, there was a bug recently where all of Europe's traffic was routed via Hong Kong or something that caused a great chunk of the, uh, the internet to fail in, in Europe. Pr pretty nice, isn't it? So, um, but if, if you can control your network in your buildings and you know where your data's going and you know who else is running stuff on the same CPU, um, that, that's kind of nice. You know, there isn't a sort of a North Korean running on the same thing as, as your... Uh, North Koreans are lovely people, no doubt. But let's say some random hacker with a, you know, 
uh, trying to look at your confidential business document. Um, so yeah, um, I think there's some bonus features about online that make it very attractive to us, because actually I think it's a place where we can win. People are used to there being a very small feature set uh, in, in the online products. Uh, Google Docs has a very limited feature set. Microsoft Office 365 online is even more limited. It's, it's quite extraordinary. And yet, there is a, this great collaborative uh, light editing use case that we can, we can actually win in. So we can have features that they don't. Um, and the other thing about it is that it makes document formats less relevant. Now, we support ODF. We ship ODF by default. We are fans of ODF. But the reality is that in the cloud, it's in the cloud, man. Who cares? You know, like, whatever. You know? and, and so we can create ODF documents left and right, and people don't even know it. You know? they, they, they're just there. You know? they, the, the default format is is that, and hey, they, it's in my browser, so who cares, right? Oh, which is cool. Um, but, but more interesting than that, it, it's actually really quite hard <clears throat> to encourage people to pay for LibreOffice support, even though our support and service is excellent, simply because it's pretty good. And PCs, you know, if it fails, then probably we'll work around it. It's not really a server mission-critical use case. So why don't we turn LibreOffice into an online mission critical use case. And then you'd be mad not to have services and support, right? So, so from a, a business perspective, hopefully, you know, we can bring money into the ecosystem uh, through this vector and through certification and, and server revenue and, and going to market with lots of people who have an existing business model selling very similar things. So that's the thinking uh, behind it. And here's how we're doing it. <clears throat> so we like an indirect uh, sales model. So we partner with people. And we strongly prefer them to sell things rather than us selling them because, well, you know, they're much better at it, probably. And, uh, you know, we, we like to focus on doing the development piece. Um, so these are the people that we've partnered with. They're all signed. They've all committed to distribute uh, Collabora online, integrated with their products. That's rolling out own cloud and next cloud, do it now. I think uh, Cfile, PyDO are either shipping right now or coming extremely soon. Uh, VNC, uh, again, you, there's videos out there. But the hope is that all these people have existing customer bases and will be you know, distributing and uh, shipping LibreOffice effectively to, to a much larger uh, customer base, which is great. So <clears throat> what's coming next? OK, so I'm just going to blow whoever else's talk. So the next key thing in Collabora Online is, I guess, collaboration. Um, so, so some of those things, well, OK, so, so here's a feature actually from the um, the shipping now in 1.0, which is revision browsing. So you, know, you, can, you can look at your revisions, and you can see all of your old documents, what they look like, and you know, grab, grab versions, restore uh, to them, which is, which is pretty nice. I, I don't know if you've seen, seen that. But just a really useful add-in for enterprise file sync and share. So people can quickly browse their versioning and see what documents look like. I mean, it's, it, it's pretty neat. Because of course, you, know, you can have all of your files synced to your local device, whether it's an Android device or a Windows PC. But the revisioning thing is harder to interact with, and we can make that uh, super easy. Uh, but what's coming next is really collaborative editing. So here are some screenshots of uh, me playing with the creatively named you know, uh, yeah, someone else and another user and all this sort of thing, and uh, you know, getting nice notifications when people join, uh, multiple cursors, selections, uh, you know, names uh, on top of it. Um, lots of fun new interactions there, lots of extreme users. We use this in Collabora actually quite a lot internally, uh, just sort of project planning. And I don't know if there are any guilty Google Docs developers here, but we'll have some good news for you later in the talk. Um, <clears throat> what else? So um, my friend Svanta at the back here is always telling me about composable operations and the importance of everything being uh, composable. And I'm sure you're right, but at the end of the day, you, you get down to these uh, conflicts where you can't do anything, and you have to repair the document. So we have a, uh, a simple undo-redo model that we're adopting, so that people get to uh, do the very easy cases. And beyond that, they get effectively the whole undo stack exposed to them. Uh, so what user did what, and then we hope that uh, LibreOffice is undoing it very, very nicely. So uh, a repair uh, mode uh, to complement the versioning. We also also auto save relatively regularly. So my hope is that with that, we, we fix all of the real uh, real world use cases uh, rel relatively elegantly and simply in terms of uh, coding. <clears throat> so one of the issues we have with online is that uh, so far you can see the commit breakdown of, of who committed it, and there's no prizes for guessing who the blue part of the pie chart is. Um, so um, all the code is already open. It's all at Document Foundation. But it can be hard to set up and work on this stuff. <clears throat> it's a mixture of C++, JavaScript, and whichever document management or enterprise file sync and share solution you like. So next cloud, own cloud. You saw the list, right? Um, and so uh, we're really planning to uh, do some more stuff with the Document Foundation to try and get this out to more people. 
Uh, so we're recommending that LibreOffice 5.3 coming up in January would be the first uh, source release from Document Foundation from this. And we'll be providing then debranded LibreOffice-ized containers so other people can, you know, uh, sell it or take credit for it or whatever. Um, and we'll provide Docker containers that are suitable for home use of the latest master build so people can easily interact with it, develop on it. We want to get translators involved too, so have nightly builds so that you can see you know, what's changed. Maybe we can do it quicker. Let's see. But uh, let's not commit. Now, it would be nice if you could translate the string and almost immediately see it in the user interface, but uh, we'll get there. Luckily, there aren't that many strings yet. It's very, very small. Um, and we also want to give counts to people so they can demo it, play with it, uh, use it, and tell us what's wrong with it, and file bugs and, and stuff. So we'll be uh, providing accounts for everyone that's here and anyone that's interested and plausibly related to the Document Foundation um, on a uh, Collabora Online instance. Um, that also provides some enterprise file sync, like a Dropbox-like uh, functionality. Please don't upload your DVDs there. Um, storage costs money. So we have other products. So we have PC products. So we sell maintenance and support. So we have Collabora Office, which has three years of support and releases twice a year. And we have GovOffice, which has five years of support and releases annually. And this makes life good for different kinds of people. And of course, you get you know, your security maintenance support. You can pick a version, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read the slide to you. It costs money. It's good, isn't it? We invest all that money in making it better. Fantastic. Um, we also provide level three bug fixing. So if you really have a bug and you really know what it is and you can describe it clearly to us, then you're at the level three support level, which is great. So uh, we'll provide an SLA for fixing your bug or st at least starting work on it because a bug takes about a man week to fix on average. And uh, we'll provide you know, fixed builds for you so that you know, if something is blocking your business, you can be confident that we will unblock it again rapidly, as rapidly as we humanly uh, can. Um, and we fix any bug for a flat cost, uh, which is quite an interesting problem because though the average is one week, some bugs take a month at least, and some take 10 minutes. So we insist on capturing the 10-minute ones as well as the month ones. Um, so we, you know, we, we have to fix all of your bugs. Um, otherwise, the law of averages is mean to us. Um, so there you go. Um, we also have dedicated engineers. Uh, so you can you know, buy a hybrid engineer who has a leg of a writer, developer, uh, an arm of a calc hacker, a head of a VCL hacker. You know, so they're a sort of a synthesis of our, our engineers. And you know, because this person doesn't exist that understands the whole code base and can fix anything. But we can luckily assemble him like uh, Frankenstein's monster. And you can buy this machine you know, for, for only, you know, uh, and it will come and fix all your problems. No. Anyway. Yeah, but it's easy to buy and budget for, so you can provide you know, an engineer and we, we, we do all that uh, flexibly. Um, so in terms of uh, taking that to the market, um, we very strongly prefer to sell via partners. So there are many things that we don't do and we don't want to do. We don't do training, uh, we don't do migration, we don't do level one and two support, and we don't speak Japanese, Finnish, Dutch, you know, like that sort of thing. Um, maybe some of us do. You know, we have a, a very diverse, globally distributed team but that's basically not what we want to do. We want to specialize on LibreOffice, developing it, and being excellent at that. Um, so uh, interestingly, now, 41 countries we have commercial support in, which is plus 20 from last year. So that's good, isn't it? Last year was only 21. And uh, those I've seen here so far, so Studio Storti, we had Marina in the, in the keynote, and uh, Italo somewhere, and uh, Nuanov, Core is, is sitting here as a representative. Uh, iCraft, we have Shinji somewhere around, uh -huh, over here, perfect. Uh, we have EDX uh, for Olivia, I guess, wherever Olivia, ah, uh, you see, you see. And Yakme, we have Maurizio. Uh, so there you go. Uh, if I've forgotten any partners that happen to be here, no, never mind, good. So um, these people are experts in their domain. They can go into your business. They can wear a pretty suit. They can, they can sell things to you. They can talk to you in your language. Uh, they can write reports and explain things to you in words you can understand. And we can focus on the coding and doing the, you know, deep, interesting stuff. And that's our really uh, preferred way uh, of doing this. So what does this look like? So say we have, we have a large uh, American company. There's a customer that prints all of their uh, 10,000 invoices a day through LibreOffice, which is cool, right? Linux, sitting on a Linux server somewhere uh, in a basement. And they use us primarily for PDF generation and then, then I guess, print. The problem is these invoices are OCR'd by some of their customers which shows you how broken the world is, doesn't it? That you should print the invoice, post it, someone else OCRs in his electronic game. But the world is broken. Anyhow, they're running on a to-be-anonymous enterprise Linux distribution, and they need to upgrade versions, you know, from one version to the next. And, you know, they've got the whole product, you know, it's just about to deploy, and suddenly they discover that 
are. It's not rendering the same as it used to. But luckily, they have a support contract. So uh, they, they call us up, and you know, instantly we're in a morass of phone calls, font debugging, infrastructure stuff, and uh, you know, we fix the problem for them. Actually, one of the interesting problems we have with commercial support is that people are usually so relieved that their, their bug is fixed, we just never hear from them again. They just wander away happily. They don't close the ticket. They don't, you know, they, you just, so you have to proactively go and say, look, you know, you're happy. Oh, yeah, yeah, very happy. Yeah, no problem. Um, it's, it's done. They have another crisis somewhere else. You know, there's uh, fires burning anywhere. Of course, in this case, it's not a collaborative office problem at all. It's the underlying operating system, um, which has broken in an interesting way. But hey, we fix that for them, too, because we're, we're nice like that. I particularly like this one because it's very graphical, and you need pictures to stay awake. Um, but I think you can see the, uh, the general uh, gist. <clears throat> How about a large Irish bank, which we were working with? They, uh, they had a beautiful solution on the Linux desktop. It was absolutely amazing. It used LibreOffice and inside a browser with a Java bean, using JavaScript to talk to the Java bean and then Firefox on the Linux desktop. And it worked amazingly. It, it worked. So, so, so that was surprising in itself. However, there was then a strategy change uh, that everything should be Windows and terminal servers. And so dutifully, this, this beast of, of all of these things was then ported to Windows and terminal servers. And even more amazingly, it still worked, uh, which, is, which is extraordinary. Um, unfortunately, under heavy load in production on the terminal server with whatever, uh, you know, it failed at random. And so you, you end up with these wonderful meetings where you, you go there and there's, you know, one guy is doing the hardware for one company. There's two different consulting companies maintaining the software. There's us, there's Microsoft, there's Oracle. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the, the typical strategy of everyone else is to go, it's them, like this. Um, so, but, but instead, we fly there, we sit there in the office, we bootstrap the build, we debug it, and of course, it's highly secure, ultra lockdown, you can't download things, you can't connect your laptop, you can't. So we defeat the security schemes, we, we, we get in there, we, we bisect the problem, we build the logs, uh, we walk ar work around it, and you know, eventually we fix this horrendous uh, horror. Uh, we build new binaries, and again, they're, they're happy, which is cool. So the, the branch offices of the bank can now continue to sell exciting financial products. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Another thing we do, uh, of course, is to try and uh, keep these things from failing again. So we like to write uh, unit tests to stop regressions escaping into the customer's deployments. That's really bad. And also, having charged someone a fixed price for fixing their bug, you know, I mentioned about bad consultancies, you know, constantly refixing. Um, so, so it would be bad if you build them again the next year for fixing the same bug. So we, we actually write quite a lot of regression tests. Um, we may be only a quarter of commits, but we're 36% of commits to the unit test directories. So, uh, and, and I think many of these are cleanups as well. So, yeah, auto-testing where no one has before. So this is pretty much the end of my talk. I'm just going to do a quick summary of three years. We've uh, been in business as a subsidiary of Collabora for three years. The parent company is a 10-year-old business coming up to 11 now, are doing awesome open source stuff. So 18,000 commits in 25% uh, of the last 12 months of commits to LibreOffice, 15 commits per day every day throughout the year sustained over those three years. 1,780 bug referencing commits, so a commit with a bug, bug and number in it. Uh, and we had 23 uh, ad collaborators in the last 12 months. And you know, one of the great joys for me, and I, I, you know, I have to do a lot of quite boring things in my role, um, one of the great joys to me is just to look at the list of people and see what awesome guys I've had the privilege to work with and you know, help fund. And you know, many of these people are, are students or interns or people who are between jobs. You know, they come through Google Summer of Code. Obviously, you have a core of you know, full-time people who are there all the time. But you know, it's just fantastic to have been able to provide gainful employment, improving LibreOffice for everybody to so many good people. And here's, here's the commit statistics. I think you get a handout of that. Uh, as always, I'm hopeful it'll continue to improve diversity-wise, and we'll be a smaller part of a bigger pie or something. Um, well, it's, it's, it's moving in that direction. So uh, that's good. What else? Yeah. So here's the summary. Our mission is to make LibreOffice rock. Of course, along with you guys, without whom we could do nothing. Um, it's all paid for by our customers. So, you know, if you're a customer of ours, you're doing something awesome. You're changing the world for the better and making LibreOffice uh, cool. Um, thanks so much to our partners who, who go out there and sell it alongside us and, and do just a great work. It's it's real pleasure to see many of you here and to share beers and, uh, you know, enjoy, enjoy time together. Um, it's all done by the staff, um, who, who are just awesome. And without the community, as I say, uh, nothing uh, would be possible. So, yeah, it's our pleasure to sponsor the conference. Thanks for your time and patience listening. <laughs>